Henry Crockett on that defensive alignment. So Crockett gets the tackle. Jackson there got a piece. So look at Florida State defensively. How they rank in the ACC, first and second, everything. But look in the nation. they second best in the nation in total and in rushing. North Carolina is uh, the other team in the ACC that's ahead, the only team that's ahead of them in several categories. North Carolina might want to be careful tonight out of Houston. That was Tim Sherman to throw. Goes down the sideline with it, and it's too long, incomplete. Good coverage on the play. Crowell going down under the ball. Mario Edwards was right there with him. Well, Mario Edwards was with him, Keith, and that's an interesting point. Sherman and offensive coordinator Tom O'Brien for the Cavaliers immediately taking advantage of uh, something they thought was a mismatch. Edwards is a backup cornerback. He's a redshirt freshman. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, plays a lot of DBs in that secondary, and as soon as Edwards came in, they went after him deep. Sherman has yet to complete a pass. He's 0 for 4. Rollout gives him a little time, gets his pass away, and it is incomplete. Again, it's intended for the man coming from that same wide receiver position, this time Sean Jones. Good point, Keith. Get him outside the pocket, roll him out, but still not an easy throw. Good coverage by the Seminoles. Home folks love it. And here comes Mr. Rice to punt again. The Feaster goes deep for the Seminoles. Bryce punted eight times in the ball game last year. And five times he had them back inside their 15-yard line. He's a big long legged fellow. Six five. He got some heat, but he got it out. A lot of carry on his kicks. Feaster drops it, bounces right back to him. Now he's looking for a little help, but he's caught from behind. Seminoles will have the ball at about the 23-24 yard line. There is a penalty flag across the field. That was a 56-yard punt and a four-yard return. This kid is outstanding. Bryce, the punter. One of the officials is talking to Dexter Jackson walking across the field. You might have a push in the back. personal foul that's against Florida State. So that'll hurt the Seminoles. Tomorrow, I don't think you want to miss the final round of the Tour Championship from Southern Hills here on ABC. Reason why? Tom Lehman is tearing it up. <laughs> He's 13 under after three rounds out in Tulsa. It's at 3.30 tomorrow Eastern Time. And uh, but, but, we're going to have no. a full examination of his golf bag to make sure his clubs are legal. Yeah, that's just the way you tear it up, isn't it? Sure. Huh? You know. There ain't no guarantee he's going to win, though. He can shoot four over par and somebody else come in there and shoot four under, and that's it. Huh? You take him and I'll take the field. All right, you got it. All right. This is Busby, and it's wide open. Got him right in the crease, and Andre Cooper hauls down his second catch of the day at the 28-yard line. That's going to be a pickup of about eight yards. Florida State is starting to do is abandon the run and throw on first down, and that's where they're picking up their yardage. Making second down and a long one. Hand it over to Mr. Dunn. Uh, Abdullah, it is. The fullback gets the rare carry. You know, Pooh Bear Williams and uh, Khalid Abdullah share that position fundamentally, but Pooh Bear is uh, the story in that he cannot keep his weight down yeah. to a satisfactory level. He's out there on the field today at about 286 pounds. So on third and a half a yard, quarterback sneak, they pick up their well, first. And the fullbacks in this offense, this uh, Seminole offense, were never had a very major role. There's a look at Pooh Bear weighing, uh, he weighs about 285 pounds. That was before breakfast, I guess. But anyway, the tight end and the fullback, there's not enough footballs on that offense to get them the ball. Well, they had William Floyd here was a fullback a couple of years ago. was the number one draft choice out by the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And he was a fullback and never carried the ball. But he stepped right in and oh, started he's playing. he's been an outstanding player. E.G. Green made that last reception for the Seminoles. And it's 
second down and a yard and a half now. The ball is resting outside the 32 yard line. Busby dumps it off. The ball goes to Abdullah, the fullback. And uh, he will have the first down as it goes across the 35 yard line. And here's the news from our studio about the Colorado. Keith, Texas in Colorado. Mike Adams had a 66 yard punt return to help set this up. Third and 11, James Brown to Wayne McGarity for the touchdown. They lead 10 zip. Keith. yards on the touchdown run. Dunn now totals 90 yards in the ball game. Rainer is 44. He almost runs around, takes himself out of the play. That's poor, ball, poor uh, pursuit by the middle linebacker. Rainer. He's off to the off to the end zone. Had a big run two weeks ago in their last game against Miami to, to really get the Seminoles started in that one also. All right, a big play for the senior is Scott Bentley. will tee it up now and kick it away. And uh, the other members of the family who are not here jump it up and down, I'm pretty sure, for Warwick. Harris Wilkins and Joe Rowe are the deep people waiting for Bentley's kick. The senior from Aurora, Colorado, pops it up in the air. Very, very short. Penalty flag is thrown. I don't know why, as uh, the catch was made at about the 37-yard line. It was fair catch, and he, got, he hit him after the fair catch, Keith, even though he didn't Did he hit him bump? hard. No, well, he didn't. Yeah. Just sort of bumped into him. Well, that, the respect that uh, Bobby Bowden has for the return of, uh, Marbury. of Virginia, exactly. They're not going to kick it deep to him. Wilkins and Rowe back there. Rowe's the man, I guess, that they worry about, too. But the penalty is against the Florida State for running into the man, uh, however slight the bump might have been after the fair catch. But I did not see a fair catch signal. I think he may have already given it. It was at the bottom of the screen. I don't think he did. Well, but it doesn't matter, does it? If Marcus he did, yeah, he didn't give a real good one. <laughs> yards, first step. But, in the but the point is this. When, when you're on that team kicking off and you knew you're going to pop it up, there's a good chance that the offensive team receiving it is going to call for a fair catch, so you should be alert for it. Yep. But you don't see it enough unless you practice it. Well, you, you practice it. You're not going to think about it a lot. You just don't see it very often. 48-yard line, and Tim Sherman really just put this one absolutely right on the hands of Walt Deary, and he didn't catch it. Yeah, somebody's got to make a play here now. Sherman, I don't think Sherman's completed the pass yet. He is not. He's 0 for 6, and that ball was right in the breadbasket. Derry came into the game with six receptions. He is the tight end. 248 pounds. you got to catch that football. The ball remains at the 48-yard line on the Seminole side. 
side of the field. Florida State is leading 7 to nothing with 2.27 to play in the first quarter. Three punts, three possessions. Handed off to Tiki Barber. Pops outside on the left side line, and he's gone. He's in there. Touchdown, Virginia. How do you do? That's 48 yards for Tiki Barber. Mr. Dunn, I'll see you at the crossroads. Yes. Dunn has two runs in the first uh, quarter, one of 48 for the touchdown, another for 25. Florida State hadn't given up a run that long all year, and those are the first points scored against Mickey Andrews' defense in the first quarter all year long. In comes Rafael Garcia for the extra point. Left puts it through. Hunter and Placebricker both use the left foot for Virginia. So the two tailbacks, as advertised, delivering in the first quarter. You got it right. As we said, the great players, there's the tailback, Tiki, said, Warwick, if you can do it, I can do it. Uses his quickness. Now, this is not where the play was designed. It was designed up the middle. But he says, I've got the speed and quickness to get around the corner and just make something out of nothing. You got to keep giving the ball to these tailbacks that can do this. Tailback, number 21, straight blocking up front. Right there, right there's a hole. Nice hole right there. Now he just breaks to the left side where he sees I can make big yardage. He would have went straight ahead, maybe five, six, seven, eight yards. But this way, there was a potential to go all the way. There was no support down that sideline either. Once he got past the angle on that corner and, and had him beat, he was gone. Well, he, he's got the speed to outrun most of that secondary, even though that secondary of FSU is quick. The thing that set this whole scoring drive up, Keith, was that botched short kickoff, yep. and then the, the penalty was, was tacked on to it. Yep. So Virginia now will kick it away from the 35. Rafael Garcia will hit it. Peter Warwick is the one of the two men deep on the goal line. Lavernus Coles is the other for the Seminoles. Blue sky in the background, and this is Coles coming out. Too. Freshman from Jacksonville. Yeah, he's out to the 27 yard line. That one of the top freshmen, maybe the top running back in the nation last year in high school. And they, they, they can't get him in the ball game enough at halfback, running back, so they're, they switched him to uh, wide receiver. You see, the Buckeyes have jumped to a 10 3 lead. Iowa got out on front 3 0 out in Iowa City, but the Buckeyes have scored 10. They're number two in the AP poll. Florida State's number two in the coaches poll. What, what Bobby Bowden has done, what is it, nine straight years they, he has finished in the top five in the AP poll? That is just unheard of. Won ten games. This is Busby. Breaking it up big. And it is through the hands of E.G. Green. That's a poor throw. You've got single coverage, you've got the man open, you've got to throw it to the inside of the field to give him a chance. Yeah, once E.G. lost sight of the ball and then had to look, turn his head literally upside down go back to look and take, back and find it. Take a look. Watch really? as he's going to go back. He's going to look to our left to try and keep the safety over there. Watch him. He looks to our left. See that? Now he throws it, but he throws it back to the outside. That's what, poor throw. Busby throws underneath the coverage to Wayne Messam this time. It's a short gain of about four yards. He's now 8 of 13 in the ball game. It's the passing game, Keith, that has loosened up the Virginia defense that has allowed uh, Dunn to get that uh, big run that he had on the previous uh, drive. Third down and five now. Rock Preston is the deep back. Or the tailback at the moment. Messam is out. Green is back. Haven't gotten his wind after that long run. Now they'll go to an eye formation with Abdullah. In front of Preston. Here they come. Mesby pumps it. He's going to go down the sideline. It'll be caught by Andre Cooper. His third catch of the game. And a penalty flag on Cooper for showing off. Now watch 
as the quarterback is going to pump his arm. Watch Busby as he pumps right here. This team leads the nation in interceptions, and when you leave, you take chances, you gamble. They burned the uh, defensive back and burned him too bad because he had pretty good position. Rondé Barber just didn't get up and make the play. And a 15-yard penalty against Andre Cooper for showing off, strutting around the field after he made the catch. Yep, that's a rule that he put in a couple years ago. After the play, excessive celebration on the offense, 15 yards. Well, they see it on Sunday, and they mimic it on Saturday. Yeah, well, that's, it was getting a little bit too, going too far in college football, and I think that's uh, something you haven't seen the last couple of years since that rule was put in. And Bobby knows it, too. you got to holler a little bit, though. Oh, yeah. Florida State, the most penalized team in the ACC. Bob Preston, the deep back. He's got it. And falls over his own man as he was looking to cut to the outside. He got tangled up with the center, Kevin Long, and went down. Home folks are hooting about the call, but that's very definitely in the rule book, and it's very strictly enforced. Oh, it is. And it was. There's no question that it was uh, the right call. Second down and eight. To the sideline. That's a good catch. E.G. Green, and he's piling up some catches today. Cooper and uh, Green. Cooper with three catches. And E.G. Green with three catches. A nice job on the offensive line and picking up the stunts of Virginia. This offensive line has uh, lost three starters from last year. Coming up on the end of the first quarter, 7-7 ball game. Warwick Dunn, a 65-yard run. Tiki Barber, a 48-yard touchdown run. at the 48-yard line. It is number 42, James Farrier, who got his feet. Tony Dingle brought the inside pressure, but it was Farrier who took him down. And we've come to the end of the first quarter of play. And after one in Tallahassee, it is Virginia 7, Florida State 7. Hey, help me figure this out. Usually the more gizmos you want, the more money you gotta spend. Then there's a Chevrolet Cavalier. It gives you a lot of the same gizmos that make expensive cars easy to live with for about half the price. If you forget to lock your doors, the Cavalier is still protected by a gizmo called a theft deterrent system. If you leave your dome light on, it turns it off. My house doesn't even do that. Get the car that's easy to own, a Cavalier. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Dave, darling, I saw your grilled chicken sandwich commercial the other day, and you looked fabulous. Anyway, I had to try one. Honey, it was delicious. The whole breast filet is bigger, plumper, and juicier than ever. And they made it fresh right when I ordered it. Dave, just between us, it was so good, I had to. Don't tell. Love and kisses, Iman. You know Iman? When you got it, you got it. Try Wendy's new plumper, juicier grilled chicken sandwich. When you're choosing a name for your baby, you want one you'll feel good about for a long, long time. It's the same when you're choosing life insurance for yourself. You want something that will endure. When you go with State Farm, you get a life insurance company that has always received the highest possible ratings for financial strength. Which means State Farm is one name that'll sound just as good when your kids are grown up as it does today. State Farm understands life.
as you've just seen, Ohio State leading Iowa 10-3. to Here's how it happened. Nick Gowers' punt is blocked by Rob Kelly. Kevin Griffin falls on it in the end zone for the touchdown to make it 10-3. And Ohio State has just added another touchdown. We'll let you know about that one. Right now, Keith, let's take it back to you. Well, the Buckeyes look like they might handle this trip to Iowa, but I'll tell you what, there's quicksand out there for those Buckeyes. They've had some trouble over the years in Iowa City. All right, second down and 19. For the Seminoles, the ball is on the 48-yard line. As we go the second quarter of play in a 7-7 ball game in Tallahassee. And that pass was intended for Messam, thrown way behind him. And the only person that had a chance to catch it was Joe Rowe, the quarterback for Virginia. Take a look at the numbers after the first quarter. Look at the number of passing yards for UVA. They haven't got off zero yet. That's a key time. Tim Sherman needs to start doing something. 117 passing yards for FSU and two turnovers in the first uh, quarter by, um, no, no turnovers, but two quarterback sacks for UVA. Third and 19. And he threw it before he crossed the line. It's touchdown, Wayne Messam. A lightning bolt. Take a look from behind the defense. It's a great play by Busby to keep it alive. Nobody's covered. Nobody's covered. Now, step up. Don't give up on it yet. Look downfield. And before he crosses, he gives Messam a chance. Throws it downfield. Messam screens off the defensive back. That's Rondé Barber. That's one of the best. No, that's row 18. Makes a nice catch. 48 yards on the touchdown play. Bet this kick is good. And 14.49 to go in the first half. The Seminoles jump back into the lead by seven. Green Acres is the place to be. Hard living is the life for me. I just adore a penthouse view. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. Explorer. It's at home, anywhere. when you put a Breathe Right nasal strip on a stuffy nose? The drug-free strip helps to lift and open blocked nasal passages so you can breathe through your nose again. Whoa. Breathe Right strips for nasal congestion, snoring, and easier breathing. Scare the Vikings Monday night. One of the stories of the ball game right here, Thad Busby making the plays. Tim Sherman is yet to get started. You can tell who's making the plays. He's the one talking. Yeah. <laughs> Public address announcer just announced three-nothing Iowa score. Got a big roar from the crowd. Somebody ought to tell him it's 17 to 3. Of course, Florida State concerned about uh, what happens to Ohio State because they're second in one poll and Ohio State is second in the other poll. That's why uh, the interest is there. On the 35-yard line, Scott Bentley will kick it off for the Seminoles. And it's a good one. All the way beyond the field of play, and here's 20. Well, Keith Wayne Nothing caught that touchdown pass, but, you know, outside of the football, 
He's got his own website on the internet. One of the person he's talked to is Tiki Barber. And I asked him before the game, what do you guys talk about? He says, hey, we talk about each other's game. We critique each other. Uh, it's very positive. There's no trash talking. But I have a feeling when Tiki goes back to that website, he won't have to critique that touchdown play. Okay? How do you trash talk on the <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good for you, uh, talking trash and uh, <laughs> websites and all that stuff. You yeah. know about that stuff? Not really. Uh -huh. Not really. Tim Sherman throws on the ground, incomplete, intended for Demetrius Dotson. Turian, though, she's the computer person. She, she's into it, huh? She'll get you going. Somebody needs to get Tim Sherman going. They just cannot uh, expect to beat Florida State without having some production out of the quarterback. Colorado's got on the board now. Kirby and Tiki Barber in the backfield now for UVA. And this is Barber. And they handle him a little better this time as he cuts back inside the tackle and picks up about three yards on that play. The three scores in the game so far Florida State. Orbeck Dunn, a 65-yard touchdown run. Tiki Barber, a 48-yard touchdown run. And then Busby on a 48-yard pass play to Wayne Messam. And the Seminoles lead it 14-7. And Sherman pumps it, now lets it go. It's too late. He had a man, but he didn't get it there in time, and it is incomplete. Double coverage by the time the ball got there, intended for Sean Jones. Samari Roll knocked it away. Samari Roll number two is a pump fake and he was not fooled a bit. That's an outstanding play. His foot was not in bounds. Or was it? Yes, it was. It was in bounds. Yep. I don't know whether he was juggling. The official yeah, was right there. He didn't have possession. He may not have possession, but uh, that was a hell of a catch. They need a big one here from Will Bryce. Dee Feaster waiting for it. The nation's leading punter. Left puts it out, and oh, they got a good Unbelievable. one. Unbelievable. Holy smoke. Feaster is bottling it and has to fall on it all the way back on the 14-yard line. That is a 60-yard punt when they <laughs> desperately needed it, and a minus one on the return. Wow. Next Saturday, here's what we've got for you here on ABC Sports. Nebraska at Oklahoma, Michigan State at Michigan, and then... It's a smorgasbord. Northwestern at Penn State, Washington, USC, Maryland at Clemson, and Baylor at Texas. So that's all on ABC next week. Check your ABC station or your cable operator to see what he might have. Watch the punting form of Will Bryce. He Steps leads, up in between the pressure. Leads the nation in punting, averaging over 47 yards. Did you have that kind of form, Bruce? No, sir. It's inside the Warwick Dunn. And we'll handle it for a couple of yards. Well, Bobby Bowden was telling us yesterday about uh, Will Bryce, the punter for Virginia, last year's game. He said he just backed us up all day long. He says it was a, the best job of punting he had seen in a long time. And I think he punted eight times, and four times it was inside the 15 yard line. Four or five times. You notice now that Bobby is not wearing a headset. Busby's in trouble. Virginia had a shot at him. And they, they got him. Todd White looked like the man that covered him. And so the Cavaliers make a break for themselves. Just going to come around from the outside. The ball comes loose. Busby never saw it. Travis from, Griffith got yeah, him, I think. Just from, he's just going to come around the outside. Busby's looking to his left. Good pass rush. That's a big turnover, and that's what Virginia has lived on all year long. First and goal at the six-yard line. And Aaron Brooks is in at quarterback. Aaron Brooks gives it to Tiki Barber. 
everybody is arms wearing a striped shirt is raised. I think this is a good move, Keith. Aaron. Here's a look at the, with Virginia, 23 takeaways of the third most in the nation. And 62% of the points that Virginia has generated this year have come off of turnovers. Second down and goal. Brooks at quarterback. Arms over the top. There's your touchdown. The arms are raised toward heaven on the edge of Hallelujah Land. The Wahoos are in there for a touchdown. Well, I think it's a good move. Keithy. Sherman wasn't playing well. Put Brooks in there. Let him go. They've used this uh, two-quarterback system some this year. It's not this is the first time that, that George Welsh has ever used it. What is George upset about? He's hollering at somebody. So the Cavaliers have answered. Florida State's 48-yard pass run play for the touchdown. They do it. Converting a turnover. Now the extra point try from Lafayette Garcia with Tim Sherman holding. Dylan Taylor snaps it. It's good. At 12.37 to go in the first half. We're even again at 14. Well, it's the defense that has done this all year long for the Cavaliers. Knocking the ball loose, getting a turnover, setting up the offense, and getting them in the end zone. Hey, the Econo Lodge Senior Room has just what older travelers want. Brighter lighting. Look, still soft and beautiful. Bigger numbers on the phone and TV remote. Time for fly fishing. And an in-room coffee maker. Spend a night, not a fortune, at Econo Lodge. Call 1-800-55-ECONO and you can save 30%. You drink about... just drink that. Can you be surprised? Your eyes, you know, begin to... most comfortable cars I've ever driven. People love talking about Ford Taurus. It's fun to drive. It really is. With Taurus, you fit in no matter what size you are. I'm big. I'm surprised by how much room there is inside it. Everybody in my family's big. Just turn the wheel a fraction of an inch, the car responds. There's a lot more room. It's designed so I don't have to search for anything. The seats feel like they wrap around you. It's a state-of-the-art car. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, starting at 18545. This car is a pleasure to drive. I have fun. <laughs> College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And the Linux complete heat system, home heating plus virtually unlimited hot water from the company you trust. We started to tell you a while ago that Bobby Bowden is no longer wearing the headset on the sidelines because he is not calling the play. He has turned that over almost entirely to Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, because when you're running that no huddle offense and the way things are happening so quickly on the field, from the side of the field, you just can't see enough to make those calls. Yeah, and, and he was calling a few plays every now and then, like he go in and say, hey, let's run this reverse, Mark, and it was take Mark way out of the uh, sink and uh, the reverse wouldn't work and then he'd call another play. And so Mark Rick finally went in and talked to him after uh, the Miami game. And Bo Bobby's reaction was great. He says, he says, Mark, after hearing what Mark had to say, he says, he says, you know, you're right. He says, why did it take you so long to come in? He says, I think you're exactly right. <laughs> he says, if I were you, I would have come in about three or four games ago. The kickoff will be handled now by Will Bryce, the punter. On a little oh look at this he got a spiral on that thing. into the wind all the way back down to the goal line and here comes the last pose having a problem getting it back to the eight and that's it unbelievable we mentioned at the opening how good the special teams were for both teams i think virginia may have the best special teams in the country certainly the two kickers are outstanding the coverage teams are unbelievable and as we mentioned they have four touchdowns on returns this year but their offense has, has been struggling. That's why the other ones have to play better. 
I think oh, Will Bryce just looked at the football and it spirals. Yeah, well, he hit that thing off the tee and got it to spiral <laughs> all the way to the goal line. Well, they cut through the wind. <laughs> so they've got the Seminoles in very poor field position for this snap on first down from the eight yard line. 14 14 ball game. 12 and a half minutes to go in the first half. And Warwick Dunn is the deep back. Abdullah in front of him and Number 44, Wally Rayner, the middle backer, just nailed him. Hat right on the numbers. What they're doing, they're throwing a slanting a lot, Keith. Watch as a defensive lineman here. They're going to slant this way. Here's Rayner. He's just going to come around. And when the play, watch the two linemen. They slant to the left. Rayner moves over. What that does is mess up the blocking assignments. It'll mess up your body, too, if you take too many of those fellas. Abdullah carried on that play and got it out to about the 10 before Jamie Sharper makes the tackle. So the Virginia defensive unit now beginning to step up and look a little sharper. <laughs> Jamie. Like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Third down and eight. <laughs> And he was caught behind by number 91, Todd White. Never got on track. Now, Todd White, believe it or not, is from Baton Rouge, which is also where uh, Warwick Dunn. Back there, teammates, they're high school yep. teammates. And he kept him from getting loose to the outside and possibly breaking the big run. Now, the Seminoles need a big kick from Sean Liss. See what he can produce. Competition between the two punters. This was, but uh, certainly this uh, in this ball game. Uh, well, he's had a 24-yarder, and this one is only 15 yards. So yeah. twice now, Sean Liss has failed to come up with the big kick when they needed it. And look at the field position that uh, UVA is going to have out of this one. It'll be first down at the 24-yard line with 10:57 to play in the first half. Somebody's called the time here. Because Virginia is going back to the sidelines for another meeting. Now they're summoned back by the referee, James Knight. Aaron Brooks is the quarterback. Brooks is the sophomore from Newport News, 6'3, 195. Anthony Southern is in the backfield for the first time today as well. to Southern, who's a 215-pound freshman from Whiteville, North Carolina, and he runs a Henry into Henry Crockett, and he stops a yard short of the line of scrimmage. Crockett is uh, second in tackles on this defense. This defense has been outstanding this year. Last year, Mickey's defense ranked 36th in the nation. This year, they rank number two. Plays a lot of players. Second down and about 12. Yeah, he's got about a two-yard loss on that carry. Brooks gives it away, and Southern gets inside the 25 and is taken down at about the 22. Darrell Bush, number 44 in the red shirt. is an outstanding middle linebacker. He is the brains of that defense. He made a 3.96 this summer grade point average, and that is the first time in four semesters that he didn't make a perfect 4.0. Senior academically, isn't he, but a junior eligibility? Yes, sir. Third down now and seven. Blitzing free safety. Rafael Garcia is in. 
into the ball game. This will be marked just outside the 35. It'll be a 45-yard field goal try out of the hole of Ken Turner. It's on its way. And it's no good. The other outstanding kicker for UVA came in. He had hit 10 of 12. He was a preseason All-American. And this one is just outside the left upright. He probably figured it hooked back a little bit from his side, but it didn't. This is Ford Escort. Did you know that it's new? If you knew that it's new, did you know the wagon's new too? The engine is new, the suspension improved. A safety cell protects, but stays out of view. It's quieter inside to shush out the out. But for those who simply must twist and shout, there's premium speakers on a new stereo, so you can get every note and get it to go. This Escort is great. This Escort is nice. This Escort has a very sensible price. So why not check out the newest Escort this season? We've given you every rhyme, and rhymed every reason. From all over the globe, from communities large and small, from origins privileged and plain, champions are drawn to Virginia. Champions of mind, spirit, and heart. Drawn to this international city in this Olympic year, the University of Virginia salutes all the world's champions, including our own. The state of Florida was only 10 years old when Thomas Jefferson's grandson, the city mayor, helped to establish the seminary west of the Suwannee. Today, his legacy rests on the oldest continuous site of higher education in Florida. For nearly 150 years, we have sought to preserve the Jeffersonian ideals of public education and citizenship through the world's newest technologies and its oldest traditions, physically, mentally, morally. We are the keepers of the flame at Florida State University. Today's Marriott moment. Take us back to November 2 last year. UVA leading 33-28. Time running out. They have to stop Warwick Dunn. They do. Just inches short of the goal line. And they upset the Seminoles. Called by many the biggest win in UVA football history. Down here in the lair. They are even at 14-14 with 8.43 to play. In the first half. The missed field goal gives the Seminoles the ball back on the 29-yard line, and here comes Warwick Dunn, slicing his way through the middle and getting it out to about the 34 before he is brought down. Well, here's a bit of news to go along with today's fiesta. It is the second largest crowd in Florida State history at Doak Campbell Field, 80,237. Since they uh, put the addition on this place, huh? yep. This is Dunn being hit at the line of scrimmage and taken down. He'll get about a yard on the carry. Here's Swinney. Keeper keep it, talking about the FSU offense, and with the exception of Ward Dunn's big run play, all their success has been through the air, and Wandy Barber has 15 interceptions. That's important to note because the University of Virginia has an NCAA record 35 consecutive games where they've come up with the INT key. Third down and four. thrown down the middle. The pass is caught by the tight end Melvin Pearsall. And uh, that should be enough for the first down. You were talking about the stadium expansion. I'll tell you one thing they didn't expand. They didn't expand the television facility. You mean the booth here? Yes. It's pretty tacky. It's kind of narrow. And up and down. You think if they're going to build a nice new stadium, they take care of the folks. Well, you think that we ought to quit bringing so much money. Maybe they <laughs> rethink it. Put it at the 44-yard line, and um, pickup is going to be about five yards on that play. E.G. Green in front of Joe Rowe. Second down, call it six. Just as he turned it loose, and uh, 
The man who hit him was Shannon Taylor. A redshirt freshman from Rome, Roanoke. You know, and the backup people on George Welch's football team, a lot of them very young people. Yep. Oh, well, we were talking to Mickey Andrews yesterday. What was he saying? Uh, he's talking to a high school coach up in Georgia. And he had Val won. Dusta, yep. Val Dusta had won about uh, 20 ch championships over a period of time. He says, how do you do it? He says, I coach next year's team this year, meaning I play a lot of players, and that's what both teams do. Busby Hines time, and throws an interception, intercepted by Shannon Taylor, the man that busted him one just a moment ago. So Taylor comes up with a wounded goose as Busby rolled to his left, never got himself squared to throw the ball, and Virginia's cooking. That's the 36th straight game that Virginia has intercepted a pass. Rolling out to get a little bit more time. He just doesn't get that ball up. Nope. That Rodney Barber was there to pick it off if he didn't. This is the third straight time that Virginia's going to take over the ball in, in, in FSU territory. Well, it's not really in their territory. It's about on the 50-yard line. Great field position three times in a row. Brooks is still your quarterback. Back to throw it. Let's it go. Bounces it in front of the intended receiver, Kiki Barber. Well, the quarterbacks for UVA have yet to complete a pass. The crowd can relax now because Ohio State has jumped out to a 31-3 lead over Iowa in Iowa City. So I don't think the AP poll is likely to change much regardless what happened here. Coming in, Brooks was 47% completion. UVA quarterbacks are all of nine. And still tied in this football game. Caught from behind. And it's number 58. Bolware. Bolware leads the conference in sacks with 10. He just working over there around Karzuski. That's the first sack for FSU here today. The loss is back to the 42, so it's a seven-yard loss. It'll be third down and 17. We saw Bolware just pass Ron Simmons. He's now second all-time at Florida State. Behind the Well, they're going to stay with the pass. And it is incomplete. Thrown hard and high, intended for Jermaine Ford. So they'll have to put it away, and the Seminole defense does its job. possessions for FSU they had two turnovers and a bad punt all of them within the 50 yard line or their own uh, yardage or their own side of the field and UVA only scored seven points Feaster circles under it at the 22 and down at the 28 and here is a penalty play in the back foul is against Florida State that'll back him up with the port of the foul and here's John coming up on Valvoline halftime 96 all the day's scores and highlights number two Ohio State in action as is number three Florida State Todd Blackledge standing by with our crack staff headed up by Brian Highland he'll bring you all the important facts all coming up on Valvoline halftime 96 This is the ninth possession for Florida State. The ninth possession and the seventh time they've started inside their own 20-yard line. And they've got 5-4-9 to play in the first half. Warwick down with the ball. 
gets hit behind the line of scrimmage, shakes one off and got away from him. Number 33, uh, Jamie Sharper, had a piece of him behind the line of scrimmage, but Warwick ran right through that. Won't arm tackle him. Mm -mm. 13 carries, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Of course, he got a lot of it on that one big run. 60, uh, 40, oh, 65 yards. Got it again. Oh, my goodness. He was within a breath of leaving town. John Harris, number 98. Take a look from behind the offense. Uh, Bates is 65, 51 is Kevin Long. 22 Williams does a nice job. You just have to wait and react, see where they're going. Not again. He is an exciting football player. He's gained over 1,000 yards the last two seasons at FSU. And the amazing thing, Keith, in his career, he has caught 115 passes. Not only is he a good runner, but he is an excellent receiver. And a good person. A man survived a lot of travail. If he makes 1,000 yards this season, he will join Amos Lawrence of North Carolina and Ted Brown of NC State as the only others in the ACC to do that. Not much going on that play. In fact, there's a loss of about two yards back inside the 30 to the 29. Jamie Sharper again. And Patrick Kearney, number 58, the big fellow right there. Sharper is, uh, leads the team in tackles. In fact, as you see uh, Dunn coming off, Sharper is number three all time in tackles at UVA. He's been around there for five years, and he's made a lot of tackles. Good, but it is short of a first down. On the second and long, second down, 13. He nails E.G. Green with it. So they'll be looking at third and about three. There's no huddle. Uh, you don't have a lot of time to do anything. Uh, talking with the coaches, they feel like Busby may operate a little bit better with this hurry up offense. Staying in the shotgun. On third and To Rock Preston, the ball was thrown softly and thrown behind him a little bit. They couldn't make well, the that's, That is not an easy throw when, the, when the, uh, the running back is going away from you, but it's one you have to hit. That should be, you, you should work on that all day. That was good enough throw that he should have caught it. Now Sean Liss, who has had two bad punts in a row, trots onto the field for the Seminoles. Tiki Barber is waiting for it. And this time, Liss got a hold of it. <laughs> Thursday evening on ABC, Miss Gordy Ava, I'm not even going to try the first name, and Rudy Galindo will compete <laughs> in their first pro single skating event. They, <laughs> they join Christy Yamaguchi, Katarina Witt, and Dorothy Hamill in the prestigious U.S. Pro Figure Skating Championships on ABC here at 9 Eastern Time. That sort of reminds me of Ara Parshikin one time when we were doing a game and we had Manu Tuiyasa Sopo come into the ball game. And I turned to Ara and he looked at me and said, big fella, just made the <laughs> team. The big fella. Big fella. He wasn't going to jump on that one. <laughs> Tim Sherman checks back in at quarterback now. Weaving his way through the traffic, spins for about three, and he goes down. After the punt, the Cavaliers got the ball at the lane 20. Tim Sherman's back in, Keith, and I think this was good to take him out of the ball game, set him down, let him watch from the sideline, and then bring him back in. What they need to do is throw something simple and easy to get him going. They need a completion, maybe to a back or to a tight end. There's Brooks on the sideline. But they need to get the quarterbacks going with something easy at completion. He's got 100 yards. 
So both Warwick Dunn and Tiki Barber now have gone past 100 yards here in the first half. And here's Lynn Smart. Warwick Dunn, number 28, just walked into the tunnel and headed into the locker room. He has sprained his left ankle. He hobbled off to the sideline and worked him on the, on the bench. They're going to ice it down. But I'm being told they expect him to return in the start of the second half. They just felt with they felt with three minutes to go in the ball game that they just didn't want to leave him on the field, Keith. That's that's probably where he uh, sprained the ankle right there. First down. Sherman looking around. Ball is covered by the Seminoles. Looks like, but there's a white shirt somewhere in the middle of the melee, and who's got it? Uh, looks like Tiki got it back. Got a good bounce and came right back to him. So they were within a half a football of losing that thing. Watch Wilson, number 55, Renard Wilson. Is he just going to come around? That's uh, Williams. He's going around. Watch, he slaps his ball loose. Nice play by Wilson. Now there are two Seminoles there, but you see Barber diving for Tiki it. Tiki Barber, very aware. One more time, saves the day. Second down and ten. Just about the line of scrimmage. Maybe a little less than the line of scrimmage. Julian Pittman, 278 pound junior from my favorite city in Florida, Niceville. All right. You got a timeout in Florida State, 107 to play in the first half. 14, 14, five. In Hour of America's Funniest Videos, teams up with a new Hour of Coach for America's Funniest Saturday Night. Catch new Funniest Videos, a special night in time, 8, 7 Central. Then, it's the biggest decision of their lives. Who will be the guardian of their baby? How the heck did we end up with no family and such useless friends? An all-new Hour of Coach, after videos, ABC Saturday. Sunday, the biggest mistake of Lois Lane's life. I think you better come with us. A special all-new Lois and Clark, ABC Sunday. Tiki Barber has 103 yards in this first half of play, and he has run for 100 yards or more three straight years against these Florida State Seminoles, and he's the first person ever to do that. They had not given up 100 yards to a running back since last year. Since last year, yeah. and they played Tiki Barber. They only gave up an average of 44 yards rushing per game coming in today. Well, Florida State next Saturday has to go up to Atlanta and play Georgia Tech, and he was in Atlanta where Virginia lost their game, 13-7. Tim Sherman back. Pressure coming, gets it away, and it is finally a completed pass for the Cavaliers to Jermaine Kroll up at the 44-yard line of Florida State. And Sherman was busted just as he let it go, but he got it there. Yeah, he did, and he... And he it's a completion, and it gets him started, but he should have gotten it there a lot quicker because Crowell is open. See, he's open now. Get the ball there. Get the ball. There's plenty of time for the defensive back to recover, but that's a start. Here's a look at the uh, schedule. Have to go to Georgia Tech. Southern Miss is not going to be any walk in the park. And of course, the big game at the end of the year right here against Florida. It's here in Tallahassee this year. And it's scheduled for ABC television. Noontime on the 30th. Go oh, buy yourself a cushion right now. Get ready for it. Because it ought to be a pretty good one. Ball is on the 45-yard line, just barely inside the 45, where they've got their first down. One minute exactly to play in the first half. They would dearly love to untie it. Timeouts remaining, each team with two, and they've got a very good field goal kicker, Rafael Garcia, waiting on the sidelines. He missed from long range a little while ago. But if they could pick up another 20 yards or so, then they would be well within his range. And the kick would go into a bit of a swirling wind, not very much wind, but enough to probably impact the ball if it's slightly offline. So first down, Sherman, the quarterback. Oh, there's 
the block that picked up Wilson because he was coming. Uh, I mean, he had him in his sights. And the Virginia quarterback is on the ground. Number 45, Henry Crockett, hit him as he threw, and Sherman is hurt. The big block came from Trevor Britton before Renard Wilson got there, but they couldn't get Crockett too. Crockett, one of the linebackers, coming on a blitz. Oh, messed up on the blocking assignments. That's Britton That's there, but 45 is Crockett. Yeah. That's right in the bread basket. Yeah, he just, just knocked him out. I think he gets the wind knocked out of him. Quarterback's rolling this way. Crockett just going to attack. He's got to have the wind knocked out of him. Yeah. His shoulder looked like it was right into his stomach. So that'll take the air out of you. And 55 seconds remain in the first half of play. On a bright sunny day in Tallahassee, Florida. The crowd uh, in a festive mood. Their team highly ranked, highly regarded. Homecoming weekend. It's a beautiful new stadium, isn't it? Just done a nice job. Here. Well, I'll tell you, all the Gator uh, writer columnists around the state are giving them the business about it. It's been <laughs> quite a running feud. <laughs> I am going to file a petition, however, to see if we can't get the television booth moved. Yeah, we, uh, we, got, we got people all over the place here. Our statistician is sitting, Mark uh, Amento is, is sitting at a different level. We got guys all over this booth. 45 yard line, second down and 10. Complete. Croyle. Jermaine Croyle, junior out of Winston-Salem, makes that catch. He's finally now finding the ball when he is open. They've been late, late, late. Now you've got a Seminole shaken up on the field. And it's number 95. That'll be Julian Pittman. There are no lollipops down there today, folks. Every yard of grass you get, you've earned it. A little easier uh, schedule in front of Virginia. They're at Duke in Durham next week. Then they have Clemson at home, North Carolina at home. And I think that's a very important ball game for them to have uh, the Tar Heels in Charlottesville. Then they have to go to Blacksburg. I think that's an easy remaining schedule, do you? Uh, well, no, I don't think that trip to Blacksburg is any easier. <laughs> I, tell you. I bet you do. You're right Oof. there. Here's 20. Well, Keith, we're talking about impressive ball players. Number 58, Peter Bullware. We know how impressive he is on the football field, but his whole family has some great credentials. His brother played for Georgia Tech. He is an engineer in Atlanta. He's got a sister that went to Notre Dame, ran track, and she's in med school at Wake Forest. His father specializes in radiation therapy for cancer patients. And uh, he is a top-notch student here at FSU himself. He's also a disruptor. He's a tough customer at that defensive end position. Aaron Brooks is your quarterback. First down for the Cavaliers. The ball at the 31-yard line. Brooks looking around. Gonna get rid of it. Should go, and he misses Croyle. Had a little bit of temper flare here. But uh -huh. They'll handle it. The reason that uh, UVA is having so much trouble completing passes is obviously tight coverage by the Seminoles. They came in uh, only giving up 160 yards passing per game. It looks like Sherman on the sideline is back and uh, ready to go. Second down and 10. 45 seconds to play in the first half. Brooks gives to Barber. Kiki breaks it. Picks up. Nine yards. He got past the first man. Almost popped out. Crawford says he has the fumble, but I don't think the officials are going to agree with him. <laughs> now it's timeout in Virginia. Score a moment ago. Alabama has gone to a 3 0 lead over Tennessee. Take a look from behind the offense. Lachlan is 52. Britain 63 doing a nice job right in the center of that line. 
I didn't see no ball come out. Virginia now with one timeout remaining. You know, I did my first college football game in 1952, Bob, and I have. This is the first time in my life I have ever done a Virginia game. So there obviously tells you there have been some lean times over the years until George Welch showed up. Yeah. Before, that, that's very true. Once George got there, it, things seemed to turn around. As you take a look at Garcia. George, uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, that did very well at Navy. The first assistant job was with Joe Paterno at Penn State. And Joe, in fact, is uh, the godfather to four of all four of Welsh's sons, or Welsh's children, I should say. You know, beneath that uh, stoic exterior that he has, looks the heart of a, a prankster in a oh, something. dry whip. And he, he always looks serious, but he's got some fun in him. Third down and two now. Oh, the Cavaliers. The pitch to Barber. He's going outside. And he's, I don't know. Depends on the mark. He's got that little extra burst, though, when he has to have it. He, he, is, he is a great player. And, and to see Bush... The middle linebacker going over there. Both of them are determined to make it and make the play. There's and a look Bush at Bush. One. Bush won by a foot. Yeah. Or less. Yep. Just about a foot. So that should get Garcia into the ball game at 28 seconds to play in the first half. A 14-14 tie. Cavaliers trying to take the lead to the clubhouse at halftime. In his career, Garcia has kicked 47 field goals. And as we mentioned, he was uh, 10 of 12 coming in. He just barely missed a 45-yarder. Sherman is on the field now to do the holding. To the 13. Florida State has not trailed in a ball game this year. It will be a 38-yard field goal try on its way. And good. And with 24 seconds to play in the first half, the Seminoles may very well go to the clubhouse trailing at halftime. 17 to 14. You know, the amazing thing about that lead is that Virginia has not done anything Offensive. offensively. Except for that one burst. Except the one run by Tiki Barber. Barber has been their entire offense, and it's been special teams, it's been defense, and it's been Will Bryce, the punter. That lanky fellow walking around there with the red hair, that's obviously Tom O'Brien. Right. He's the offensive coordinator, and offensive line coach, and... Just a real nice gentleman. With hair that color, his name would have to be O'Brien. <laughs> 24 ticks remaining on the halftime clock. 80,237. My goodness. Will Bryce will kick it off for the Cavaliers. You think there's a whole lot of activity in the UVA Law Library this afternoon? Well, I, there is some, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's some, yes. <laughs> I, I, I'd say that sure there's, there's more than some. <laughs> uh, there's more. I had a son that went to UVA, and let me tell you, yeah, I understand. there are a lot of people over in that law library on Saturday afternoons. Will kicks it. High, high, high. That's not as dramatic as the one he hit a little while ago when he knocked a spiral over the end of the line of the end zone goal line and had it returned. That ball's kicked out of bounds, so they'll probably come out to the 35. They are kicking into a breeze that way, and that's why they're doing that. Here's Swanee. Okay, Florida State, every year their defense comes up with a model or a saying, and they put it on a T-shirt. This is a T-shirt that they wear, and on the back, it's a Seminole saying that says, Hadjo, that means reckless courage. Now, that defense has shown a great deal of courage in playing Virginia. They've been anything but reckless. They have been smart, under control, and playing great. However, they are still behind by three at the moment. Lynn, how do you get reckless courage out of Hadjo? 
Well, it's it, this is, uh, I don't know, the translation is what they're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is. Uh, I don't speak the language myself, but uh, I, have to, I have to trust them on it. All right. I think our uh, license and practice offices need, will need to talk to you somebody. The ball is on the 35. They're going to put a knee down and, uh, and take the snap and let the clock run off. And so your halftime score at Doe Campbell Stadium, Florida State University in Tallahassee at 17, Virginia, 14, Florida State. At BASF, we don't make the cooler. We make it cooler. We don't make the jeans, we make them bluer. We don't make the toys, we make them tougher. We don't make the water scooter, we make it lighter. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Save some hot water! Too late! Honey, turn up the heat! It is up! Please let it be him. Please let it be him. Please let it be him. The gas-fueled complete heat system from Lennox. It's him. Virtually unlimited hot water and comfortable home heating in one unit. And it runs on economical natural gas, so it's super efficient. Yes! The Lennox complete heat system. Not just heat, complete heat. Yes! Clean natural gas. Think what you'll save. Someone figured out, together, we have 115 years working on Fords. My great-grandfather built the Model T. My grandfather built the Model A. My dad crafted the sheet metal for the Lincoln. Today, I'm an engineer on the Mercury Sable and the Ford Taurus. Growing up, I was taught, whatever I put my hand to must be done with the highest quality. After all, it has to live up to the family name. Visa salutes American Olympic champions. In 1988, Eric Flame turned in a superb performance in the 1500 meters in speed skating to win a silver medal at the Winter Olympic Games in Calgary. He can skate this last inner turn well. I think he's got a good chance of breaking the world record. In continued support of amateur athletics, Visa today is proud to donate another $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team to support future Olympic hopefuls in their quest for the gold. Take a stroll down memory lane at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You crushed my knee. It was your toes. You broke my ribs. It was your nose. Ah, yes. Oh. I remember it well. You sacked me once. I sacked it twice. In pouring rain. No, oh, it was nice. Ah, yes. I when you go, don't forget well. your Visa card, because the hall takes the NFL's best, but not American Express. See ya, Nitschke. It's Butkus. Ah, yeah. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Valvoline Halftime 96 Brought to you by Valvoline The number one choice of America's top mechanics People who know use Valvoline From our New York studios John Saunders and Todd Blackledge Rafael Garcia with a field goal And Virginia has the lead 17-14 to 14, Two years in a row well, I don't know. It's still a lot of football to be played, but Virginia really hanging tough. George Welsh, a great football coach, and, and really two marquee players in this game, both running backs. They're both having great first halves. You can see both of them over 100 yards, and look at the averages, 8.0 for Barber, 6.8 every time he carries it for Warwick Dunn, and the reason for that is both these defenses like to really attack the line of scrimmage, get seven, eight, nine guys up there. If you can break through that initial line of scrimmage, you can make big plays running the football. Florida State, hoping it will not be two years in a row losing to Virginia, the only team in the ACC that's beaten them. To the scores and highlights now. Number two in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes, but a tough road game at Iowa facing Hayden Fry's squad. Stanley Jackson, though, with a couple of touchdown passes. This one, 16 yards from David Boston. It was 17-3 at that point. Remember, 56 nothing at halftime last year. Ohio State rolling again. One thing Iowa has done this year is they've led the Big Ten in forcing turnovers and not committing themselves, but three turnovers in the first half, a block punt for a touchdown for Iowa. Ohio State really getting a gift by the Hawkeyes. Arizona State has yet to lose. Could they be headed to a matchup against Ohio State? Jake Plummer's trying to take them there to the Rose Bowl, and Plummer here. A couple of touchdown passes. This one to Lindsey Jackson. 
17 yards. It was 14 nothing. Arizona State with a couple of scares against USC and UCLA. Not this time, though. Well, Jake Plummer is playing with so much confidence, and the rest of his team feeds off of that. This is a team that expects to win now when they go on the field. Alabama against Tennessee, as you would expect with Alabama, it's low scoring. Tennessee, though, not getting anything in the first half. Texas against Colorado, Rick Neuheisel and the Buffs trying to pull off a victory against a Texas squad that has struggled this year. James Brown, though, to Mike Adams, 51 yards. You see the athletic ability of James Brown here. Yeah, he really can move out of the pocket, throw on the run, and, and he's had to in this first half because Colorado really has attacked the line of scrimmage. And a scary moment for Colorado. Coy Detmer, of course, he got hurt last year with a knee injury, gets hurt in this ball game. He is out. John Hessler's in. We don't have any more information at this point on the status of that injury. 17-14, they will evaluate his condition at halftime. Meanwhile, BYU against TCU. Steve Sarkeesian with three touchdown passes, 26 now on the season. Oklahoma and Kansas State. Ryan Cavanaugh with two touchdown passes. Oklahoma with a couple of wins in a row, but struggling in this game. Well, Kansas State, a very good defensive football team. Sometimes they win despite their offense, but today, Brian Cavanaugh throwing the ball pretty well for the Wildcats. Tulsa against Utah, and Juan Johnson, three touchdown runs in 180 yards. He's replacing, say it with me now, Todd, Chris <laughs> Fuamatu Ma'apala. 45 to 19 is the final there. Washington and Oregon. Corey Dillon with a terrific day in this game. Three touchdown runs. Yeah, he has really done a great job filling in for Rashawn Sheehy. He's out with the ankle injury. And Dillon has done a great job ever since he's been in. Three games over 100 yards, heading towards that again today. A really good find for Jim Lambright. Yeah, Hawaii against Air Force. In this one, we are going to talk about the quarterbacks in the service academies a little bit later. Bo Morgan, two touchdown runs and a touchdown pass, 34 to 7. We'll talk about it later. The service academies doing terrific this year. Iowa State against Baylor. Todd Docks with two touchdown passes. Troy Davis, 128 yards, 121 yards rather, 5.3 per carry. This guy is among the tops for the Heisman Trophy, as we know. Maryland against Duke, 22-19 is the final. Duke, 0-7 on the year. Central Florida losing to Georgia Tech, 27-20 the final. Charlie Rogers, two touchdown runs and a touchdown reception. South Carolina and Vanderbilt. Scott Norris had two touchdown runs, 27-0 the final there. Cincinnati and Louisville, Robert Cooper had a touchdown run, 10-7. Dartmouth and Cornell. Dartmouth, 6-0, 3-0 now in the Ivy League. Colgate blows out Lafayette, 40-9 is the final there. Stick around. We'll be back with more of Valvoline Halftime 96 right after this. Presenting the Valvoline Xerox Big Play Rebate. Get $4 back on a case of Valvoline or $6 on a three-pack of Xerox Antifreeze. It's up. It's good. Whoa, People who know, use Valvoline. My name is John Anderson, born in 1914. My age is 90. George Hartman, I'm 101. As we approach our 100th anniversary, we honor those who worked at the side of Henry Ford. Their spirit and commitment to quality lives on in every man and woman of today's Ford Motor Company. In extreme temperatures, yesterday's antifreeze coolants don't offer enough corrosion protection. Because today's multi-metallic engines are more susceptible to damage than ever, they need Xerox. Extreme protection for today's engines. Football in the Atlantic Coast Conference has a proud heritage, and our institutions have had a great deal of success on the field. In the decade of the 90s, the ACC is the only conference to have all nine schools play in postseason bowl games, with Georgia Tech and Florida State winning national championships. Academically, six ACC schools were cited by the CFA for having a better than 70% graduation rate, the most ever by any conference. The Atlantic Coast Conference is committed to athletic and academic excellence. Welcome to Valvoline Halftime 96. John Saunders alongside Todd Blackledge to the scores and highlights. Northwestern, a team that has lived on the edge the entire season, losing the first game to Wake Forest, but they have come back. Darnell Autry will not play in this game. Steve Schnur trying to pick up a first down on fourth and one, doesn't get it. 
But later, Steve Schnur hooks up with Brian Musso again. Yeah, I, this team has got great resiliency. They missed the one fourth down. Now, this is a tougher one. Fourth and five. He comes through with a big throw to Musso. And three plays later, Adrian Autry would take it in for his second touchdown of the game. It seals the victory. 27 to 24 is the final for Northwestern. 13 straight Big Ten victories for Adrian Autry. 128 yards, a couple of touchdowns, picking up for Darnell Autry. Yeah, Gary Barnett mentioned it last week. If one soldier goes down, somebody else has to pick up the flag and run with it. Adrian Autry, two weeks in a row. LSU over Mississippi State. Kevin Falk had two touchdown runs and a touchdown pass in this contest and 177 yards, a terrific back. 13th ranked rushing team in the country, LSU, battling back after that tough loss to Florida. Speaking of tough losses, Penn State last week to Iowa. Joe Paterno trying to get his team back. And Indiana quarterback Jay Rogers is picked off by Gerald Filardi. 24 yards on the touchdown interception. 48 to 20 at that point. Indiana's lost 13 straight in the Big Ten. Mike McQuarrie came in as quarterback. Is this a change for the good for Penn State? Well, it may be because this offense really has needed a boost. And Mike McQuarrie, when he's come off the bench, he's given that to the Nittany Lions today. A couple of touchdown passes really got that offense going in the second half. Navy blows out Wake Forest. Chris McCoy, two touchdown runs and a touchdown pass. Wake's lost six since beating Northwestern. Michigan State over Wisconsin. Todd Schultz, two touchdown passes. Michigan State, a big surprise today. And they've gotten a real boost in the arm from Todd Schultz because he hurt his knee against Nebraska. He was out for a couple weeks. Ever since he's been back in the lineup, this offense has been pretty good. Cedric Irvin also a good running back for the Spartans. Wisconsin struggling after that fumble last week. Now Texas Tech against Texas A&M. Zebby Lethridge to Sammy Morris. 81 yards this one covers. And Tech has a 13-10 lead. But how about Byron Hansbard? 13-10 is the final in this game for Hansbard. 198 yards. He didn't get 200 today. <laughs> didn't get 200, but that's a pretty good defense he ran against against Texas A&M. Still a big day for him and a big day for the Red Raider defense as well. Syracuse over Boston College, 45-17. Donovan McNabb had a great day. Two touchdowns passing and two touchdown runs as well. Pitt beaten up again. Virginia Tech this time, 34-17. Jim Druckenmiller, two touchdown passes to Sean Scales. Army a winner over Miami of Ohio, 27-7. Ronnie Makeda with a touchdown pass. Columbia wins again, a perfect 6-0 now. And Columbia had never beaten Yale three straight years until now. James Madison loses to Delaware, 27-13. Greg Maddox had a touchdown pass there. And Marshall against Appalachian State. Eric Kresser could have been the quarterback at Florida, but he would have been the backup to Danny Werfel. So he transferred, and he hooks up with another transfer out of Florida State and Notre Dame. Randy Moss, 73 yards. 17 to 10 at that point. Marshall wins it 24 to 10. Eric Kresser with three touchdown passes. Always the unexpected in college football, but this year a season of surprises, starting off with Arizona State and their win against Nebraska. Yeah, great turnaround for the Sun Devils. Derrick Rogers becoming a star on defense, while the offense is led by the multi-talented quarterback Jake Plummer, and this team has become the most exciting team to watch in college football. It's been a decade since they made it to the Rose Bowl. How about the success of the service academies led by quarterbacks Chris McCoy of Navy for Air Force Bo Morgan and Army's Ronnie Makeda? Teams are very similar. They all run the triple option. They are led by talented quarterbacks. And none of these teams are ranked in the top 25, but when it comes to rushing in the country, they're all in the top five. Army is first, Air Force second, and Navy is fifth. The turnaround of Columbia, hard to believe. They said if Northwestern can do it, so can we. Their head coach, Ray Tellier, showed his team the Northwestern highlight film before the season. Same team that had a 44-game losing streak several years ago, now a legitimate contender for the Ivy title. Speaking of Northwestern, they lose to open the season to Wake Forest, but they've come back just like last year. What surprises me is that they needed an early season wake-up call again to get on a roll, but it doesn't surprise me that this team is succeeding. Quarterback Steve Schnur has elevated his game to a new level. That's why this team is playing well. For Ohio State, they lose Bobby Hoying, Ricky Dudley, Eddie George, and Terry Glenn, but they don't miss a beat. Don't miss a beat. Not only that, this team is averaging more yards and more points per game than that talented group a year ago. On top of this, a very good defense for the Buckeyes. And something we clearly agree on, we like the new overtime rule. Yeah, there's a lot of skepticism whether this was the right format or not. It's not sudden death, but it has had a sudden impact. It's added a great deal of drama and excitement to the college football game. It's also somewhat changed 
strategies because now we see coaches playing to get into that overtime period. Yeah, you know, last year there were only nine games that ended in a tie, but so far this year, 12 games have gone into overtime, so coaches are more inclined to play for the tie and take their chances in it's OT. It's been a very exciting season. We'll continue with part of that season right after this. Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time, by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round-trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's big mouth burgers, all just for playing. You want to play sports at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. I'm Brent Musburger at the Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tom Lehman has put together rounds of 66, 67, and 64. He's 13 under par, nine strokes ahead of B.J. Singh and Brad Faxon. Tomorrow, we'll find out if he can win the Tour Championship. Valvoline Halftime 96, brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline. And your second half is straight ahead. First, a reminder, next week on ABC's College Football, it's a double header. For those of you not on the West Coast, at noon Eastern time, some of you will see Nebraska and Oklahoma, others Michigan State against Michigan. On the West Coast, the second part of your double header, San Diego State against San Jose State. At 3.30 Eastern time, all of you will see one of these games, either Northwestern against Penn State, Washington, USC, Maryland and Clemson, or Baylor and Texas. Check local listings for the game available in your area and on pay-per-view. It's time now to introduce the Burger King Scholar Athlete of the Week Award. This week, we feature Matt Kennelly from the University of Southern California. He has a 3.74 GPA in public administration. And here are this week's nine other student athletic winners from Division I, II, and III. Burger King and its franchises are proud to donate another $100,000 this week to the general scholarship funds of these colleges and universities. Remember, stop by your local Burger King restaurant for details on the college football scholarship fund. And this week, the 79th Rose Queen was named. She is 17-year-old Jennifer Elaine Halferty. She has the honor of reigning over the 1997 New Year's Day festivities. You can see them right here on ABC starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. If you missed a score, remember, log on to America Online. Keyword is ABC Sports. And we'll have the second half coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Good morning. Ty Kirby. Room 426. Hello, Ty Wants Kirby. to survive his first interview. Uh, rubbish. Sit up straight. Don't talk too much. Good day to you, Mr. Kirby. Good luck, sir. Good. My lucky shoes. Hello, I'm Ty Kirby. I'm ready. Marriott, when you're comfortable, you can do anything. ABC Sunday. 
It's one of Tom Clancy's most powerful thrillers. I will destroy you. Harrison Ford, Patriot Games, Sunday, parental discretion advised. ABC Monday, Callie, a single mom who's going to the top. I'm going to law school, I'm going to sit on the Supreme Court. She's one of the dangerous minds. Then... The Chicago Bears battle quarterback Warren Moon and the Minnesota Vikings on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. This is the South Florida Water Management District. Non-elected bureaucrats who'll spend the billion dollars raised by Amendment 4. The South Florida Water Management District has earned a reputation for wasting money. Florida Tax Watch criticized their lax oversight with taxpayers' money. Over a million in unauthorized bonuses private planes for board members, another million in missing materials. Vote no on Amendment 4. It's just another billion for the bureaucrats. About other dealers from the leader, Tallahassee Ford. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. At the leader, Tallahassee Ford, get the real deal. Own a 96 Ford Contour GL or 96 Probe SE for just $13,988. Your choice, $13,988. Or get 1.9 financing or $2,000 cash back on a new 96 Ford Taurus. Get the real deal at the leader, Tallahassee Ford. just hope to be healthy, decide to be. It's the new wave in healthcare, and we're here to help. We're Tallahassee Memorial. It's your life. Take it, make it all that you can make it. It's your life. It's your life. Living well. News Channel 27.